Thank you for joining us on Crunch Econometrics. We are still continuing our series on ARDL models. Today we are looking at estimation. From the previous video, please make sure you have watched that before you watch this one. In that video, I spoke about how you can specify ARDL models. So as a continuation on the screen, you can see the generalized form of the ARDL PQ model. I said in that video, the previous one, that is the P's are the lag length associated with the dependent variable, while the Q's are the lag length associated with the explanatory variables. Again, the lag length PQ may not necessarily be the same. The P can be lag 1, can be lag 2, while the Q's can take any figure. And from what you can see also, the dependent variable can also be a vector. A vector in the simplest form I can explain to you is that each of the variables in this model can also be used as dependent variables. So yt can be a vector and that would depend on your research question on what, you are, on what your study is all about. I will begin with the bounds test for cointegration. In this example, I have three variables, the log of MVA, the log of IMP, and the real exchange rate. Remember, I said the y in the generalized form can be a vector. So in this example, I'm going to take each variable in that model to be a dependent variable, and I'll be testing for cointegration. So the first test will be when the log of MVA, MVA in this case is manufacturing value added. So when the log of manufacturing value added is a dependent variable, I will test for cointegration. The next test I will conduct is when the log of imports, which is LNIMP, I will use it when the log of imports is a dependent variable and test for cointegration. The third test will be when the real exchange rate is a dependent variable and I will also go ahead to test for cointegration and observe the outcome. So let us move over to EVUs. So these are the variables from 1981 to 2014. So I have 34 years data. This is the log of imports, the log of IMP and the real exchange rate. So in testing for cointegration using the bounce test, I will go to quick. The log of MVA is my dependent variable. Log of IMP next, real exchange rate. Under methods, I click on ERL DL. I go to options. I select AIC information criterion is, is the default criterion, so I leave it the way it is. I go back to specification. Because I only have 34 years data, I cannot use the default lags of 4 as indicated by eViews. So I'm going to change this one to 1. The same thing for the regressors, I modify it back to 1. For the fixed regressor stress specification, I select model 3, which is unrestricted constants and no trend. I click OK. This is the first stage of the regression. You can see here the dependent variable log of MVA. My model is ARDL. My model selection method is AIC, stated here. And AIC has selected the appropriate lag lengths for each of the variables as ARDL100. Lag 1 is for the dependent variable. Lag 0 is the first exogenous variable. And lag 0 here is, is for the second exogenous variable. And you can see here. This is a lag of dependent variable, zero lag for log of import, and zero lag for real exchange rate. These are the coefficients, the standard errors, the t-statistics, and the prop value. So this is the first stage. Now to test for cointegration using bounds, I click on view. Coefficient diagnostics, I click on long, long run form and bounds test. I scroll down because that is the most relevant result in this test. Where we have bounds test, and t statistics so this is what i need the null hypothesis is that there is no levels relationship so the f statistics obtained here is 1.519 and what is the criteria if the f value is below the io bound you cannot reject the null but if the f value is higher than the io bound then you reject the null hypothesis of no cointegration likewise if you are using the t statistics value if the absolute value of the t statistics is lower than the i o bound you cannot reject the null and if the absolute value is higher than the i one bound you reject the null hypothesis of no long run relationship 
And you can see up here, case 3, this is the model we used. You can see here, case 3, levels equation, unrestricted constant and no trend. So clearly, when the log of NVA is a dependent variable, there is no cointegration. So let us go ahead again and test when the log of IMP is a dependent variable. So you can see on the screen now, I've changed it. The log of IMP is now the dependent variable. I don't change anything here. The lag length is still at 1, 1. I'm still using my model 3 constant. The method is still ALDL. Sample size still remains unchanged. I click OK. This is the first stage of the regression. You can see here, dependent variable, the log of IMP. The selected model using the AIC criterion is still 1, 0, 0. To check for test, to check for co-integration, I click on View, Diagnostics, Long Run Form and Bounce Test. Click on that. Scroll down to where you have your F-test and T-statistics, and let's see what we have. So again, you can see here, case 3, unrestricted constant and no trade. The F value here is 5.86, which is clearly above the I1 bound. So using the F statistics, there is co-integration when the log of INP is a dependent variable. Using the T statistics value, the absolute value of 3.92, is also clearly higher than the 5% bound here, which is 3.53. So when the log of IMP is a dependent variable, there is co-integration among the variables. So lastly, let us test when real exchange rate is a dependent variable. This is the result. When the real exchange rate is a dependent variable, you can see it up here, real exchange rate. The selected model given the AIC criterion is also 100. Again, this is the first stage of your regression. To check for co-integration, click on View. Select Question Diagnostics. Look for Long Run Form and Bounce Test. Click on that. Scroll down to where you have your F test and T test. So these are the figures that we need. You can see here the F value 1.308. By now you know the rules, the decision criteria. You cannot reject the null hypothesis of no cointegration when the real exchange rate is a dependent variable. Using the T statistics, absolute value at 1.88, same outcome, you cannot reject the null of no cointegration. So when the real exchange rate is a dependent variable, there is no cointegration among the variables. Put the results out neatly in a table. Result from the bounce test for cointegration, we are using model 3, where we have unrestricted constant and no trend. When the log of NV is a dependent variable, these are the outcomes. Is there cointegration? No. So what do you have to do next? Simply estimate ARDL model. When the log of INP is a dependent variable, these are the outcomes, the F and the T statistics. Is there cointegration? Yes. What do you have to do? Estimate an error correction model. When the real exchange rate is a dependent variable, these are the outcomes. Is there co-integration? No. What do you have to do? Specify and estimate an ARDL model. So you can see beneath the table, I have also clearly spelled out the way the model should be specified. Once there is no co-integration and you're only doing an ARDL model, this is the way you should specify your model. And if there is co-integration, this is the error correction representation and the model should be specified in this form. The dependent variable should have the difference operator. You can see the difference operators here. When you are specifying either the error DL model or the error correction model. So this is the way you should specify your equations. I'm going to wrap up this um, tutorial today by saying that um, the outcome of the bounce test will tell you whether you are specifying a vector error correction or an error correction, or simply an error DL model. And you only specify a vector error correction model only if there is co-integration from the three equations estimated. In this case, I only have one co-integration from the three equations, so I cannot do a vector error correction. I'm only going to do an error correction model and two ARDL models. You obtain short-run dynamic parameters from the estimations of your VECM or ECM associated with the long-run estimates. If you want to know the short-run causality, you can only know it 
when you look at the significance of the t statistics from the coefficients of the short run equation if the coefficients are statistically significant then you can know that the dependent variable has an effect from the independent variable that is the exogenous variables have causal impact on the dependent variable likewise for the long run relationship after you have estimated your error correction model for you to know whether there's going to be grandeur causality look at the t statistics of the lagged error correction term if it is significant then it tells you there is a grandeur causality in that relationship and lastly when you want to interpret you simply interpret your uh, coefficients using the Sertieri's paribus argument. These are simply OLS estimates. So you can use the same inferences that are based on the usual OLS standard errors and test statistics. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Stay with me for the part three, where I show you how to estimate the ALDL model and the error correction model.